Following SummerSlam 2005 and the infamous Shawn Michaels vs Hulk Hogan main event, the Hulkster would once again disappear from the WWE and the company carried on as if he was never there. The planned HBK vs Hogan match series was obviously not going to happen and the SummerSlam 2005 main event ended up being a fine display of how the Hulkster's politicking was still as prevalent as ever. What was interesting though was the fact that Shawn Michaels found a way to throw it back in the Hulkster's face. Shawn knew that the smart fans knew that Hogan had a tough time putting people over and doing the right thing and Hollywood Hulk Hogan came out of SummerSlam 2005 looking as bad as ever even though he won the match. After SummerSlam it wasn't just a case of smart fans knowing that Hogan was tough to deal with backstage, practically anyone who followed WWE or anyone who looked at a wrestling website understood what had happened and it wasn't a big industry secret that Hogan refused to do jobs. And over time it even became a sort of meme. So you'd like to think after all these years that Hulk Hogan learned a lesson and Hulk Hogan would finally see the value in losing matches, how fan perception can have a more negative impact than actually putting someone over, and how refusing to do jobs can make fans quickly turn against you. Now, people will argue that Hogan beating Sean was the right thing to do, and yes, there are people out there who believe this, and that's fine. I mean, Hogan has more history, Hogan was more recognisable, Sean wouldn't have this massive platform to work on if it wasn't for Hulkamania running wild in the 80s, and that's all completely cool, and these are all very fair points. It can also be argued that Sean wouldn't have gained much from beating Hogan, because Sean too was already in the WWE's tier of legendary superstars in 2005, so win, lose or draw, the outcome wouldn't really push Shawn Michaels into a new phase of his career. But if Hogan had wrestled a young guy, a guy who still had literal decades left to give inside the ring, then the absolute right thing to do would be to lose to this young superstar. I mean, it just makes sense, give the guy a big victory and let the guy live off that victory for months afterwards. Hulk Hogan had that opportunity one year after the Shawn Michaels fiasco when he stepped into the ring with Randy Orton at SummerSlam 2006, a guy who had been calling himself the legend killer and a guy who had absolutely nothing but a bright, bright future ahead of him. Hogan could do a lot of things by losing, he could make amends for SummerSlam 2005, he could silence those smart fans who knew about his backstage politicking, he could give a younger star a seriously big push by putting him over, so it just made sense for Hogan to lose. Hell, it would even turn out to be Hogan's final WWE match so there's practically nothing for the company to gain by having Hulk win. Did Hulk Hogan do the right thing at SummerSlam 2006? Did he allow Randy Orton to live up to his namesake and did the legend of Hulkamania finally get killed? <laughs> that doesn't work for me brother. This is the story of Hulk Hogan vs Randy Orton at SummerSlam 2006. The next time we would see Hulk Hogan on WWE programming was during the 2006 Hall of Fame ceremony. Hogan would induct the legendary Mean Gene Okerlund into the class of 2006 and a 26 year old Randy Orton cheered as the Hulkster inducted his good friend for nearly 30 years. Orton knew a thing or two about the legends of the wrestling business. He had developed a character within the WWE that would show absolutely no mercy towards the stars of yesterday and Randy Orton would build his own legend by becoming the legend killer. No one was off limits, from Jake Roberts and Mick Foley to Roddy Piper to Sergeant Slaughter and even Shawn Michaels, Randy Orton would show no remorse when going after some of the WWE's biggest legends, but the legend killer would become more than just a little gimmick for Orton, it became his entire persona, and what's more, the whole thing became incredibly successful, so successful that Orton would become the legend killer again and again throughout his career even when he was already established as one of the company's absolute best. Legends and old timers of the business would get dropped with an RKO and even sometimes a vicious attack from Randy Orton, repeated examples of the young guy getting a rub from those who paved the way, and it just all worked really well. Add in Randy's overall smugness and his unwavering confidence and you've just got a recipe for success. 
The Legend Killer was one of the best things to come out of the whole Evolution faction, and the Legend Killer didn't only help to spring Board Orton to the next level, but it was something Randy and indeed the whole company could fall back on when a legend of the past wanted just one more match. And at the 2006 Hall of Fame ceremony, the fans chanted one more match at Hogan, and they also chanted for the Hogan vs Steve Austin dream match that never happened. Fans of course wouldn't get to see Hogan vs Austin, but they would get to see the Hulkster in one more match. It would be the legend killer Randy Orton stepping into the ring with the real American Hulk Hogan, and the match would take place at SummerSlam 2006. Around this same time period, Hulk Hogan's reality show Hogan Knows Best had been on the air for around a year, and the show had introduced viewers to other members of the Balea family including Hulk's wife Linda, Hulk's son Nick, Hulk's second girlfriend Brian Nobbs, and Hulk's daughter Brooke. It seemed like Hulk's entire life mission around this point was to put over Brooke and somehow facilitate his daughter's big break into music, and so Hogan would use his relationship with the WWE to try and get Brooke more exposure. Brooke Hogan's music video for her song About Us premiered on WWE Raw, much to the dismay of wrestling fans around the world, and the following week, on the July 3rd 2006 episode of Raw, Randy Orton said there's no two ways about it, Brooke Hogan was hot in last week's music video. Orton said that an upcoming episode of Hogan Knows Best will feature the Hulkster picking a date for his daughter, and yes, there's unlimited potential for Hogan jokes here but moving on, Randy said if Hogan picks Orton then Brooke will find out why Randy Orton is a legend. Orton says if Hogan has a problem with that then the Hulkster will find out why Orton is also a legend killer. So yeah, this whole rivalry started over a Brooke Hogan music video and the Hulkster's VH1 reality show. Before his match with Val Venus the following week, Orton announced that Hulk Hogan is going to show up this week on Saturday night's main event, and Randy is looking forward to introducing himself to the Hulkster. After the legend killer defeated Val in a matter of seconds, Randy grabbed the microphone again and he announced that Brooke Hogan is also scheduled to appear this Saturday night, and just like before, Randy Orton is looking forward to introducing himself to the Hulkster's daughter. Saturday night's main event then on NBC, July 15th, 2006. Hulk Hogan and Brooke Hogan open up the show, and Brooke cuts to the chase when she says she hopes her career can be as good as her father's. Brooke and Hulk are very proud of each other, yada yada, Hulkamania is still running wild, you know the drill. Out comes Randy Orton holding a single red rose, and Randy tells Hulk he has a sincere respect for Hogan before turning his attention to Brooke. Brooke gets handed the rose and the Hulkster looks a little dubious about this whole thing. Randy says because Hulk's a legend and because Randy is the legend killer, Orton wants to respectfully challenge Hogan to a match at SummerSlam. Hogan then respectfully accepts the match and that was it really, that was how the SummerSlam bout became official. It certainly didn't have the same fanfare as the HBK vs Hogan announcement the previous year, it felt like it was plucked out of thin air but not Nonetheless, the legend vs the legend killer was now set in stone and it's happening in just a few weeks time. Later on in the show, Orton was seen backstage sweet talking Brooke, and the Hulkster interrupted Randy with a big slap to the back. Brooke got into the Hulkster's car and just as Hogan was about to get into the driver's seat, Orton reappeared and an RKO was delivered. This RKO here was probably the highlight of the whole build up, and it's probably the only thing that you'll remember from this build up because the rest of it was quite bad. On the Raw following Saturday night's main event, Orton said that he hopes what happened between he and Hulk doesn't interfere with his potential relationship with Brooke. The following week, Hulk Hogan made his return to WWE Raw and man, the pop Hulk Hogan gets from the audience in Cleveland was absolutely phenomenal. Hulk gets a bad rep for his WWE stints in 2005 and 2006, but anyone who says the fans didn't care about Hogan are simply lying or they have really bad memories. You have to 
give the devil his dues, the fans were still popping for Hulkamania after all these years. Hogan brought up his history with the Orton family and how Bob Orton and Hulk Hogan respected each other after all the dust settled and after all the blood had dried. But Randy Orton had shown disrespect to the Hulkster at Saturday night's main event. Hogan will show Orton the meaning of respect at SummerSlam and then Randy Orton interrupts the promo. Randy said he isn't there to talk about Hulk Hogan, he's there to talk about Hulk's daughter Brooke. Orton said that Hogan must be going blind if he can't see the chemistry between he and Brooke. Orton said that Brooke had paid the legend killer a lot of compliments and it's a shame that Brooke will have to witness her dad getting dropped with an RKO at SummerSlam. Hogan then challenges Randy to get in the ring. Jerry Lawler ended up throwing Randy in after Orton had shouted at the King, but Randy was able to escape a beating from the Hulkster as the segment came to a close. The following week, Randy announced that he had just been given his own reality show, Orton Knows Best. Out came some actors portraying Nick Hogan, Brooke Hogan, Linda Hogan and the man himself, Hollywood Hulk Hogan. When Nick says he wants to be a wrestler just like his dad, Orton says Nick needs to go bald first before throwing him out of the ring. Randy then says that Linda Hogan is obviously an animal lover because she married a beast walrus, but Linda and Hulk did have a beautiful daughter named Brooke. And this all leads to the fake Hogan getting all up in Randy's face. Randy ends up kissing Brooke and the fake Hogan takes an RKO and the segment ends with Randy slapping Jerry Lawler for getting involved last week. This whole thing was a giant swing and a miss unfortunately and there was practically nothing redeemable about the whole segment. I mean, one guy going after another guy's daughter should really write itself but this is a fine example of the WWE overproducing a segment. No one really cares about Brooke, Nick and Linda so why on earth would people care about Brooke, Nick and Linda imposters? Sometimes it's just really baffling how promos like this get green lit but moving on, Jerry Lawler challenged challenges Orton to a match next week on Raw. Raw is being held in Memphis so the King would have an incredible amount of support going into this matchup. Orton ended up defeating the King after hitting a low blow followed by an RKO but the big story on this evening was the news that Hulk Hogan had got injured. Apparently Hulk had a torn meniscus in his right knee. This was a legitimate injury by the way but Orton wasn't buying it. An interview was posted on WWE.com where Randy flat out said that Hulk was using this injury to avoid the match at SummerSlam. But Hogan replied by saying he would fight through the pain in order to wrestle Orton on the pay per view. Just imagine how Vince McMahon reacted to this backstage though. The news that a promoted Hulk Hogan match may not even make it to pay per view must have sent Vince up the wall and who knows if this contributed to Hogan and Vince's falling out. But either way, Hogan put off knee surgery so he could work this SummerSlam match and this maybe explains why the featured bout was moved to the middle of the card. It would take Hogan nearly 6 years before he had the required surgery but let's not speculate about how much pain Hogan was or wasn't in, we'll just never know the answers to these kind of questions. Randy Orton ended the Raw before SummerSlam by cutting a promo on Hulk Hogan. Orton said that Hogan was the main inspiration for the legend killer. As a kid, Orton would watch Hogan come to the ring and he'd do the same old thing, but Randy just didn't get it. Why were fans getting behind this tired and boring act when it's the same thing week in and week out? And yes, we can say the same thing about Randy these days, but Randy says that he vowed as a kid to end Hulkamania forever, just like the Dungeon of Doom. Randy Orton's destiny and life mission will be completed this Sunday when he defeats Hulk Hogan, and all it's going to take is one RKO. Out comes the Hulkster, only it's not the Hulkster, it's the imposter. Randy and the fake Hulk make fun of Hulk's injured knee, but then the real Hogan comes down to the ring and Randy takes the big boot, knocking him to the outside. The imposter Hogan's lack of in-ring abilities actually gets laughed at by the audience. I mean, we shouldn't expect someone with zero training to know how to hit the ropes, but this looked extremely bad. Hogan body slams the imposter and the crowd thinks they're going to see the big leg drop, but Hulk wasn't feeling up to it. The imposter takes a few elbow drops before being tossed out of the ring. 
Hogan then confirmed that he's going to be at SummerSlam and there's one legend that Randy can't kill, the legend of Hulkamania. And Orton looked extremely bored as Hogan went through his usual routine, the exact same thing that Orton called boring at the beginning of the promo. And so we reached SummerSlam held in Boston on August 20th, 2006. Unlike last year's SummerSlam, Orton vs Hogan wasn't the main event. Instead, Orton and Hogan would go on third, while John Cena vs Edge would end the show. The knee injury was a concern here. Hulk had limped his way down to the ring on the Raw before SummerSlam, so it was anyone's guess how this thing would turn out. I don't think for a moment Hogan walked into this one knowing it would be his last WWE match. You gotta think that Hogan maybe thought he would come back again and again for these one-off special matches and the big paydays that such matches brought. But as it would turn out, this was the night that Hulkamania stopped running wild in the WWE. It would have made a lot more sense if the legend killer ended the legend of Hulkamania 2 though, but that didn't happen. Hulk Hogan ended up winning this one, and I'll admit that I found that absolutely unbelievable even back in 2006, but we really shouldn't have been surprised either. Randy didn't go out and oversell like Michaels though, Randy was a professional here and he'd done what he had to do, but Randy must have known that the fans around the world would know that the outcome of this one was bullshit. If you're a Hogan fan or not, it's really irrelevant. The guy's body was now beginning to break down to the point where his advertised matches were in jeopardy. Hogan only had these special one-off appearances left in him and it was even uncertain if these could happen without injury. And over here you have a young and hungry Randy Orton who is dripping with potential. It just made an incredible amount of sense to give Orton this victory and there's nothing that can be said here that would change my mind on that. But Hulk Hogan won the match and Hulk Hogan went home, whereas Randy Orton showed up to Raw the next night, the next week, the next decade, and he's still there to this very day. The match started off in typical Hogan fashion with the big push to the corner and the shoulder block that surprises the opponent. Hogan then takes his time getting out of a headlock, and as the match progresses you can't help but feel that we're seeing a tremendously downgraded version of Randy Orton. Remember, Hogan had that bad knee too, so you can't completely tear this match apart, but it certainly didn't help matters either. Hogan punches, scratches and chokes his opponent, but he doesn't do any wrestling moves. It doesn't take long for Randy to begin targeting the knee, and just to avoid any further damage, Orton goes after the left knee and not the supposedly injured right knee. Orton goes to the top rope and he misses a high risk move. Hogan begins firing up but Randy reverses with a drop kick and we see the RKO. The drop kick and the RKO would be the only bumps Hogan would take in this whole match by the way. The referee counts to three but Hulk gets his foot on the ropes. Orton thinks that he won the match but the referee decides that the three count won't stand and the match gets restarted. Randy is livid as the bout continues, but it doesn't last long afterwards. Hogan hulks up, he hits the big boot, he then wastes a ton of time by pandering to the audience, and then we see the leg drop. 1, 2, 3, Hulk Hogan wins his final WWE match. Orton rolls out of the ring and Hogan celebrates with the audience. And as mentioned earlier, I don't think Hogan necessarily knew that this would be his last post-match celebration with WWE fans, but yeah, the legend of Hulkamania was not killed by Randy Orton at SummerSlam 2006. Immediately following the show, fans were pretty much in agreement that the wrong guy won at SummerSlam, but just like today, you'll still find your die-hard Hogan fans or those who just have a strong dislike for Orton that'll say otherwise. To be fair, it might be a little pointless complaining about Orton not going over Hogan because, well, Orton would still have an incredible run with World Wrestling Entertainment and he'd still make a ton of money. But still, it would have been a nice achievement for the legend killer to end Hulkamania once and for all. 
Either way, the end result was Hogan leaving and Orton staying, and Hogan's next match was against The Big Show during an event in Memphis, an event that was not promoted by WWE. This was originally supposed to be Hulk Hogan vs Jerry Lawler, but that match fell through. Hogan and Eric Bischoff then produced their own Hulkamania tour that took place in Australia in 2009, and in October the same year, it was announced that Hulk Hogan had signed a contract with TNA. The Hulkster would remain in TNA for around 4 years on and off, and we will of course look into Hulk's time in TNA in future videos. Hogan would come back to the WWE in 2014, but again, that will get covered down the road. I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you very very much for watching, and take care.